Hello and welcome to my video, my top daily practices I swear by for PCOS. My name is Laurence. If you don't know me, I started as a holistic nutritionist and health coach, went on to becoming a life coach, NLP practitioner, even using somatic healing. That's more of what I do now. But really my whole journey started with symptoms that were really debilitating and PCOS. And this was really what woke me up to living a different life, a different way, and really looking at like what was happening inside of me and starting to take real responsibility for the external things in my life, including my symptoms that were showing me where I was out of balance, out of alignment, and what I really had to pay attention to. So today I'm going to be sharing some lifestyle practices, things that I do on a daily basis and from years of coaching um, other women, what I've seen to really make a difference and through the research, because we tend to underestimate just how impactful lifestyle is. And so this is really a big part of being able to achieve hormonal balance and live with vitality because what we're choosing, the way that we're living has a profound impact on how we feel, what shows up in our life. So I'm going to start with number one. And the first practice is exposing my eyes to daylight in the morning. And so I do this before breakfast usually. And what this means is basically getting outside. So even if it's covered, like there's clouds and it's not sunny, it's still beneficial to expose your eyeballs to daylight. And so this bright light in the morning naturally will trigger cortisol to make us feel more alert and awake. And so we do want cortisol to be produced obviously in the morning and then falling off in the evening because that's our natural circadian rhythm. It follows that pattern. And so this will help with our energy. And so light exposure is actually so influential on our body systems. It actually influences all organs and body systems. And this of course includes our hormones. And so our sleep and wake patterns can literally sabotage our health goals and worsen hormonal balances or improve them. And so circadian rhythm misalignment is actually very common in women with PCOS and it's linked to insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, mood imbalances, obesity, microbiome variation. So issues with the gut, reproductive and endocrine disruption. And so this is why this factor in our life is actually so influential. And it's literally as simple as what are you doing before bed? And what are you doing when you wake up? Because a lot of the time we're just on our electronics and sometimes, you know, we're like un under fluorescent lighting and we're not actually getting outside and really following that rhythm of like when the sun goes up, that's when we get our <laughs> eyes exposed to the sun. And when the sun goes down, that's like when we start to dim the lights and it's, we're going to talk a little bit more about that, what to do in the evening. Um, but this is literally following the natural circadian rhythm. So what does this mean? We want to aim for daylight exposure first thing in the morning because this is following the rhythm of the sun and this will help you realign your circadian rhythm and as a result, help to balance your hormones but also improve mood, energy, things like that. So first thing is exposing your eyes to daylight in the morning. Number two, second practice, is a balanced breakfast within 90 minutes of waking up. And so the body again follows our circadian rhythm. And this will also influence our appetite, our digestive system, our digestive function, insulin, blood sugar. And so we naturally will in you know a balanced sort of body, uh, we will have a naturally higher appetite and digestive fire in the morning and insulin function, we are more sensitive. So that means that we can process food more easily and we aren't as resistant. So if you're not hungry in the morning, because a lot of people are like, I have no, I have no appetite in the morning. And this can mean that your body is stuck in fight or flight. So this stress response. And so this is where, even if you're like, I'm not hungry, maybe having a snack or having some sort of like fat or protein, even if it's really small, can really help. It's not about having a huge breakfast if you're like really not hungry, but starting to have something 
protein or fat, um, especially important to have protein. So we're not just like skipping until like lunchtime. And so this is where it can really help with our cortisol and our hormones. So the research has found that planning your day actually with a bigger breakfast, a moderate lunch and a lighter dinner can support insulin sensitivity because of that pattern and even reduce androgens and improve fertility among women with PCOS. So it's interesting because this circadian rhythm and this um, sort of meal timing can actually really influence um, PCOS as well and hormones. And a study looked at heavier breakfasts that were rich in protein compared to heavier dinners in PCOS women. And it showed declining levels of glucose, insulin, testosterone, DHEAS, androstenedione. So these are the androgens. And there were also significantly more ovulations reported in the breakfast group. So this is really interesting because studies are showing that it actually can really impact our hormones, our fertility, and all of that insulin. And the thing is, when we eat after a certain time, usually around 7 p.m., especially when it's dark out, this is where our digestive fire starts to dampen. We don't have the same blood sugar and insulin response. So we're actually, it's more beneficial to have like a heavier meal or even a more carbohydrate heavy meal at the beginning of the day because your body can process it better. And our body is going to increase more of that insulin hormone as much as 30 to 70% after 7 p.m. compared to the same meal we ate before 7 p.m. So it's really interesting because science is now showing that the timing of our meals can actually really influence PCOS. And so this is what I see a lot of women will skip breakfast. They might even have like something sugary or a coffee. And this is just going to spike cortisol and lead, on, lead you on this roller coaster. And a lot of the time we're restricting throughout the day because we don't want to eat too much. And then ultimately we cave and we have cravings and emotional, you know, binge eating, things like that, because we've restricted ourselves so much during the day. And this is even worse to be eating so much in the evening. So this is why it's really, really important to have enough food and nutrition during your day and not just wait until evening. So establishing regular eating times can also improve insulin sensitivity and also the rate at which your body breaks down food and blood fat levels. So we don't want to skip breakfast, especially if it's for like a coffee or something really sugary. We wanna have at least like a little snap, snack. Um, and so it's really important that we support our bodies with that. And it can even just be like something super simple. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated or like really big. So how can you start to support hormonal balance with your meals and your meal time, timing? Because this is really important for your energy, your mood, your hormones and all of that. And really important to look at how are you fueling yourself? So looking at, are you going for cereal? Are you going for like the quick protein, sugary bar, or are you looking at something like eggs, um, even like a savory breakfast, like leftovers from the day before, like a balanced smoothie, things like that. The third factor is post walks post meals. So going for a walk after your meals. And so walking actually has so many tremendous health benefits. And I'm going to talk about two of those today, especially when it comes to hormones. And so this is where um, walking, first of all, is highly underrated because it's like, well, it's not going to burn enough calories and build muscle, but it's actually really, really important as like a lower impact workout. And basically almost that anyone can do it. And this is where it also can impact our stress because it's shown to reduce the fear response in the brain, helping to reduce stress and regulate cortisol levels. And this is really important because when we have high cortisol, chronic cortisol, then our reproductive hormones are going to be inhibited and we're not going to be really focusing on any of those functions like reproduction, um, digestion, healing, vitality, energy, because the body is focused on the threat. And this is a big sort of inhibitor of the healing journey or even, you know, achieving hormonal balance, it's high cortisol. And this can affect literally every system in the body and basically every PCOS symptom. The female body is highly sensitive to stress. And this includes exercising too hard, too long, too often. And this can re even suppress reproductive function because when you're constantly activating the fight or flight response, this will drain sex hormones, 
prioritize the stress hormones instead. And so low impact movement, like walking Pilates yoga, yoga will really help to regulate cortisol levels and support hormonal balance, especially in the second half of the cycle when we are more sensitive to stress. So the first piece is cortisol and stress, and it also can help to improve the glycemic and insulin response, specifically after meals, because then that energy can go somewhere. We're not just sitting. So that can improve your energy, your mood, your focus. If you find like you're having a hard time concentrating after lunch, it can be really, really helpful after dinner, after lunch to go for even a quick walk. And that can really help with the glycemic response, your blood sugar and your insulin. The fourth factor is apple cider vinegar with meals. So this is something that's become a lot more trendy, apple cider vinegar for digestion, blood sugar, skin, hair. And so this is where it can actually make a big impact on the glycemic effect of a meal. So specifically for women with PCOS, this is really important because of that insulin resistance factor that is so common. And this is where apple cider vinegar has been shown to reduce the glycemic impact of a meal. So for instance, it's been shown to reduce blood sugar by 34% after eating 50 grams of white bread. So if you eat something that's a higher glycemic um, response, then it can actually lower that just with the vinegar. And so it improves insulin sensitivity during a high carb meal by 19 to 34%. It can lower blood sugar and insulin response. Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar before bedtime can also reduce fasting blood sugar in the morning. And numerous other studies in humans show that vinegar can improve insulin function and lower blood sugar after meals. So this is where it can literally shift the response of a meal, even if it's a higher carbohydrate meal, just from that vinegar. So this is really important. Uh, this is why I usually have apple cider vinegar like after lunch where I have a heavier meal after my workout or before lunch, um, because the thing is, it can also support digestion and reduce symptoms like bloating around meals. So this is why I will have it before my meals for not only the glycemic response, but also for the digestive um, benefits. Apple cider, apple cider vinegar stimulates warming circulation energy throughout the body. So this can stimulate liver function as well, improve the glycemic response, even help to reduce cravings. And so it can also help with um, stomach acid and breaking down our food, specifically protein. So this is something like a really simple habit. It doesn't take a lot of time and it's very affordable and it can really make a big difference. I actually like the taste of it. I add a splash of it, of it to my water and I sip a little bit around my meals. I add it to sauces as well, to dressings. I usually consume it with my heaviest carb meal of the day. And then I'll also have it before like eating animal protein. So I usually have it at lunch and dinner. And the thing is you always wanna choose raw, unpasteurized, organic, apple cider vinegar. And so this can be found in most stores and you want to refrigerate it. And it's a super simple tool that can really make a big difference. The fourth factor is spearmint tea. So this is actually anti-androgenic. This is an anti-androgenic herb, meaning it can reduce androgens, aka male sex hormones. And so those are the hormones that are specifically really annoying that cause these symptoms like hirsutism, hair loss, acne in PCOS. And so this is why uh, we really wanna look at reducing those androgens. And spearmint tea is actually quite fascinating because it has studies that show that it can actually help improve um, PCOS. And it's literally with two cups a day. So a 2010 study found that women with PCOS who drank two cups of spearmint tea per day for one month showed much lower testosterone levels than the control group. And so the study concluded that spearmint tea is a helpful natural treatment for hirsutism in PCOS and reducing those testosterone levels. So that's two cups a day. Um, and specifically you could see results pretty quickly depending on the person, um, but usually it's about a month to see a difference. And the last one, continuing on the conversation of circadian rhythm, we're looking at bedtime now. So we talked about morning. So what about the evening? Because this is really important for our circadian rhythm as well. And so we really want to pay attention to our blue light 
um, exposure. And so that means like electronics, right? TV, computer, phone. And this is because blue light from electronics inhibit melatonin production and it promotes cortisol production. So it dysregulates the circadian rhythm, it disrupts sleep, impacts hormonal fluctuations and impairs daytime energy because we should be winding down. Melatonin will be secreted usually around 9 p.m. We're getting sleepy, we go to bed. If we kind of skip that or we inhibit melatonin production or it's impaired, then we actually can get a second wind of energy. And this is where we're like kind of wired and cortisol goes up. And so this creates an imbalance because cortisol should be going up in the morning, not at night. And so this is where things can get a little wonky. So women with PCOS specifically have been shown to have issues with their melatonin receptors, which is associated with worsened symptoms, but also ovarian dysfunction and infertility. So darkness in the evening will support melatonin production and the drop of cortisol. And this is where even like looking at a sunset, having more orange light, like um, those salt lamps or dimming the light can be really helpful as well to kind of help your body tune, tone down and kind of like get into the sleep mode. And this will also help with melatonin as well. This matters a lot because it matters to your brain. Light signals travel to your central clock in the brain, which then communicates to all of our organ systems in the body. And so our daytime metabolic processes will differ from nighttime processes, and this will affect our hormones. So what we're, our body does during the day is different during the night. And this will include things like fat burning, hunger, appetite, mood, cognition, immunity, blood sugar and control, digestion, insulin sensitivity, reproduction, et cetera. This is why the circadian rhythm literally affects all of these processes. It affects your whole body. And so when we go against nature and we kind of hack that, and this is where it can be really tricky for like shift workers, where they're going against the natural rhythm of the sun, and this can really impact the whole body. And so your sleep and wake patterns can literally make you sicker and worsen your symptoms, not only PCOS, but hormonal and basically all systems of the body. The circadian rhythm is so influential on overall health. So this is where we really need to pay attention to that and kind of go back to our roots because we are not meant to be going against nature because the body will respond. So circadian rhythm misalignment is linked to insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, mood imbalances, obesity, microbiome variations, reproductive and endocrine disruption. And so there was also a rat study that found that continuous light exposure contributed to the occurrence and development, developmental progress of PCOS-like manifestations. So this is where we wanna look now at how are we approaching our bedtime routine. So for me, um, it's trying to avoid blue light one to two hours before bed. And so sometimes I will be on my phone or computer, but I will activate the red or yellow light. And so this will be um, more helpful because that blue light is really what inhibits melatonin production. Blue light blocking glasses can also be helpful, but if you can at least an hour before bed, do something that is not electronic based. So whether it's going for a walk, spending time with your loved ones, your partner doing like a really, um, calming sort of yoga, stretching routine, um, reading, meditating, like there's so many things like experiment with what works for you, but really trying, especially that one hour before bed, doing something that doesn't involve blue light and electronics. And that can really make a big difference. So these are the factors that I wanted to talk to you about today. I hope that this was helpful. There's a lot of little things you can take from here and implement into your daily routine and that are not like super complicated and that are super accessible. And so for me, I have transitioned out of PCOS coaching, specifically in nutrition coaching. My one-on-one -on -one coaching and programs are using more energy and somatic healing and looking at the mind-body um, connection and a lot of life coaching. So that's where my coaching is now going towards looking at like a deeper aspect of healing and not just food and nutrition. And so this is why I'm so thankful that I created the PCOS course, because I still want to serve women who are looking for an alternative way to overcome their PCOS symptoms and actually, you know, achieve hormonal balance and vitality in their life. And so this is why my course is basically encompassing 
my own experience, my, my own research from years of going through my own journey, but then also my, with my clients. And so this is why the course that I created is a self-paced course. And it really guides you through all these foundations of gut health and reducing inflammation and blood sugar balance and mindset and hormones, like how to live more in sync with our hormones. And so it really takes a deep dive into all of these foundations in order to really understand PCOS from an alternative perspective and from a more empowering perspective of like, you're not the victim, you're not stuck with this and you can take radical responsibility for your life and your health and things can change. You're not just like stuck with the diagnosis and take birth control and that's it. Cause I tried the classic approach that was birth control, you know, it's restrictive diets like keto, cutting carbs, fearing fruit and sugar, exercising more. And not only did it make me feel terrible, but it also made my PCOS symptoms much worse. So for me, I had daily cystic acne um, and with all of the rules and restrictions that I put on myself, I developed disordered eating, binge eating. I had thyroid issues, hair loss, hirsutism, um, missing periods and ovulation. The list goes on and on like anxiety, depression. And so I really experienced like a whole spectrum of symptoms that were really debilitating. And for me, something inside of me knew that there was another way and I didn't want to go with the pills and the diets. And this really took me on this healing journey that went far beyond food um, and really brought me to a sense of coming back to myself and really understanding what's out of balance, what's out of alignment here and where do I need to pay attention. So I know PCOS can be super confusing. You can feel so alone, broken, helpless, hopeless. Like it's just like hearing everything's normal. Your blood, your blood results are normal or you need to be eating less or you need to lose weight. And it really is much deeper than that. And we really need to look at what is out of balance and how are we living in a way that is not allowing our body to really heal. And so this is why I created PCOS Breakthrough, the process I took my clients through to over overcome their PCOS symptoms holistically. So they were really <laughs> thankful to actually find out that you don't need to go keto or exercise harder or count your calories or avoid all of the foods you love to get results, feel good in your body and live your life without PCOS limiting you because it can feel like it's this identity that is limiting and you just can't be who you want to be and do what you want to do because you have PCOS, but it does not have to be that way. It's really just a wake up signal. And so the course really shows you how to do this and navigates the pillars of mind and body health and key hormonal foundations to be able to live your life with more vitality, reduce your symptoms and achieve hormonal balance. So if this is something that you're interested in, you are curious about, I will put the link in the notes and are the description. And so you can check it out there. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Please share with anyone who you think could benefit from this. I really wanna get this message out to as many women as possible. And I really appreciate your support.